Hi, Jared Dennis here with episode 17 from the Success Council. Today, I've got to make a public apology to Michael Moore. Let me explain. I thought I understood Michael Moore. Watching Moore's career as a documentary filmmaker, I was convinced that it was not possible to spend the hours he must have spent researching the topics he has covered to arrive at the conclusions he always comes to. More government. In 2004, he expertly showed the farce of the Gulf War and the corruption of the Bush family in his film Fahrenheit 9-11. His solution? Vote Democratic. He went on to campaign for Obama in 08, and even now, four years later, after it's quite clear that Obama supports the same agenda and these unjust occupations, Moore remained quiet. Moore sees the tragedy of public schooling, and his solution? More funding and more government involvement to make the disaster even bigger. Check out episode 11 for our analysis of public schooling. Moore sees the travesty of poverty and a broken economy and calls for more government intervention and more welfare. The very cause of the broken economy. In every interview and in every documentary Moore has ever made, he has consistently pushed the agenda of the collectivist totalitarian rulers who are trying to amass more power in government. Like all collectivists, stealing wealth from some and giving to others is perfectly moral. Unless you or your friends are not the recipients, in which case it's evil. Uh, here's a hypocrisy alert for you. Michael Moore, you know who he is. He's the maker of a lot of different films. Well, he got over $840,000 in taxpayer-funded incentives to make his movie. But guess what the movie was about? The movie was about opposing taxpayer-funded incentives for businesses, so some people might find that a little hypocritical. Yeah, he made a movie called Capitalism, a love story, a documentary about corporate welfare. Moore has also spoken out regarding school shootings and has been particularly outspoken in favor of gun bans ever since his film Bowling for Columbine. The short-term solution is we have to ban the assault weapons, ban the semi-automatic weapons, ban the magazines that can hold more than 10 bullets, that's it. That, that should be the, the bottom line of what we need to start with. We should be registering every gun. We don't do that now. We should be licensing everybody with a gun. After all of this evidence, I was certain there is no way a person could do that much research into all of these topics and arrive not just at the wrong conclusion, but the exact opposite of the correct conclusion. I assumed he must have been bought and paid for by the ruling class, pushing for absolute and unquestionable power of the government. I assumed he knew exactly what was going on, and he was just a well-paid foot soldier in the war of propaganda. But in the last few weeks, he has gone and done something completely out of character. He has gone against the ruling class. He stopped blaming Columbine, Sandy Hook, and other mass shootings on guns. He has broken the ranks and told the truth that all of the kids involved in mass killings have been on psychotropic prescription drugs. The Eli Lilly Corporation, a pharmaceutical company, for uh, nearly 15 years covered up their own internal investigation that showed that anyone on Prozac uh, is 12 times more likely to attempt suicide than those using other antidepressants. Not 12 times more than the average population, 12 times more than those already on other antidepressants. This is a criminal act. And I want to know why these criminals are still walking the streets. I now long for the days when I saw people popping the Little Mermaid in 29 times as the pacifier. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because that's not the pacifier now. The pacifier now is pop a pill in their mouth. In Bowling for Columbine, uh, we never really came up with the answer in terms of why this happened. I think we did a good job of exposing all the reasons that were given were a bunch of BS. You know, Marilyn Manson caused them to do it. This, this, or that caused them to do it. And none of it really made any sense. That's why I believe there should be an investigation in terms of what pharmaceuticals, prescribed pharmaceuticals, these kids were on. And, and perhaps uh, parents, it would have a shocking, um, it would just would be shocking, I think, to the millions of parents who prescribe this for their kids if, they, if it was finally explained to them, if this is the case, that this perhaps occurred for no other reason other than because of these prescriptions. Imagine what that would do. Imagine how people would 
totally rethink things, grasping for every little straw they can to explain why something like Columbine happens, when in fact it may be nothing more than this. How else do you explain two otherwise decent kids, very smart, no history of violence to other kids in the school? Why them? Why did this happen? It's an extremely legitimate question to pose, and it demands uh, an investigation. In the words of the doc, Do you know what this means? It means that he doesn't know what's going on at all. It really baffles me. But despite all of the countless hours of research he has done, he has not pieced it all together yet. The question begs, how could he miss it? I think Kevin Spacey in The Usual Suspects was close. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he was a capitalist. You see, more has fallen for the trick that because they are big, bad, greedy people running mega corporations and making billions, that they are capitalists. Further, he believes that the antidote to those horribly selfish people is big government. The mega rich, the ones who own the banks, big pharma and the military industrial complex are in fact all socialists. Just in case you think being rich makes you a capitalist, let's dispel that with some obvious proof. Stalin, Lenin, Mao, Castro, and every other socialist leader lived like a king while their people lived in poverty, even to the degree that over 50 million people died of starvation under the rule of these mega wealthy socialist exploiters. Not to mention the very high standard of living of the thousands of blood-sucking bureaucrats around them. Now, please note, I'm not trying to suggest that all capitalists are loving, caring, charitable people. Of course not. There are greedy, horrible capitalists as well. All I'm suggesting is that whether someone is rich or not does not define them as a capitalist. So what does? A socialist, like all forms of collectivism, believe that it's acceptable to take wealth from some people and give it to others by force. A capitalist believes it is always wrong to initiate force against your fellow man, no matter how worthy your cause is. For a capitalist, breaking into your neighbor's home and stealing his stuff and giving it to the poor is just as offensive as creating a large bureaucracy and threatening to do the same to everyone who does not give what the bureaucracy says they should. The easiest way for a capitalist to get rich is to provide value so that others voluntarily give him money in exchange for that value. The easiest way for a socialist to get rich is to take wealth off of others via government. So let's revisit the mega rich owners of these global corporations that Moore calls capitalists. Banks claim that they are too big to fail and demand government bailout when they run their business poorly. Not to mention, enjoy the exclusive right to counterfeit money through fractional reserve lending. Socialist, not capitalists. Big Pharma enjoy massive grants to find and patent new drugs, then get massive subsidies to sell them to customers at inflated prices. Socialist, not capitalists. The military-industrial complex keeps the U.S. at war year after year after year, even though 90% of the American people want the war to end. They receive massive contracts with ludicrously generous terms, not from the supposed customer, the American citizen, but from the government. Socialist, not capitalist. Moore spends hours in his films depicting these people as the disgusting parasites they are, and then draws the exact wrong conclusion. It is government that enables their theft and favoritism. It is government that steals trillions off you, me, and future generations to give them these fortunes. It is government that protects their monopolies by harassing their competition and licensing laws. And finally, it is government that threatens to label you a bad parent and take your child away from you if you fail to give the poisonous and suicidal drugs the government employee, school psychiatrist, prescribes your child.
woman has barricaded herself and her daughter inside their home. State officials came to the house to remove the daughter from the home. That's according to a family member out here on the scene. Godboldo came to the attention of Child Protective Services after she decided to stop giving her 13-year-old controversial antipsychotic medication. The mom refuses to give her daughter medication because the drugs caused her to become violent. The Department of Human Services attempted to take the child uh, from the mother. Godvaldo barricaded herself in her home and this lasted 10 hours. Mary Ann was hauled off to prison for five days. Ariana is now at a pediatric psychiatric facility where Godvaldo claims she's being abused. Community groups have rallied on behalf of the family, saying parents should decide their children's medical treatment. And more solution? Get the government to investigate? Investigate what? Better ways to take money from you and me and give it to Big Pharma? Better ways to cause more children to become more homicidal so they can take our guns off us faster? Asking the government to investigate is as idiotic as asking the getaway driver to be the thief's prison guard. How can Moore be so stupid? How can he research as much as he does and not have figured out that the global elite control Big Pharma, the military industrial complex, mainstream media, the banks and financial institutions of the country, the Republican Party, and the Democratic Party? How does he not realize that almost everything he stands for helps these mega-rich sociopaths accumulate more power and more wealth. Despite all the evidence to the contrary, he thinks if we just hand over more power to the government, eventually a president will be elected that will do good. So, Michael Moore, I owe you an apology. I assumed you were a player an accomplice to the global elite, working hard to convince good people to give up their freedoms and become serfs. It turns out that you're not evil, so I'm sorry. But my goodness, you are dumb. In our next episode, we're going to look at the declining standard of living for Americans, and more importantly, the cause, and how you can protect yourself. This could be the most important video you ever watch.